uh, it is still few minutes to 11.30, but I think since everyone is here, the speaker is here, the chair is here, so we can uh, uh, start the uh, morning. And uh, as you see, uh, RCEP is uh, all across, everywhere, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, the imperatives, the choices, and uh, the directions, and, and I think uh, none of us are unaware of uh, the broad dynamics, and, and we all know that China is the main factor for discussion when we talk about ASEAN. So I'm so glad that uh, 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 my very old friend, uh, Dr. Song Hong, has uh, ventured and has dared to come and accept this challenge of uh, explaining uh, India-China uh, connect uh, in the uh, RCEP context. So, uh, so this I think is uh, is uh, is extremely uh, important. Uh, uh, there are uh, several areas of uh, of cooperation uh, uh, in this, and uh, of course several complementarities. Uh, I think uh, for too long uh, uh, we have carried forward the uh, old spirit of uh, uh, China India competition. Uh, and uh, Professor Song Hong, as you would agree, uh, it is important that uh, uh, we also explore possibilities of cooperation. And, and we see uh, uh, how the Wuhan spirit that uh, 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 Prime Minister Modi and, uh, and President uh, uh, initiated in terms of uh, action in Afghanistan and talks about uh, our cooperation in Africa. So, so th that kind of cooperative uh, spirit is uh, uh, absolutely essential for uh, India and China and, uh, and for their uh, uh, partnership in, uh, uh, in uh, Africa, in Southeast Asia and many other uh, uh, regions. Uh, at the, uh, as being the senior fellow of the Institute of World Economics and Politics, uh, IWEP of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, uh, you have been leading the work program on uh, Chinese development experiences. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, Professor Song Hong is also uh, initiating a mega program in terms of uh, uh, China's development experience and its relevance for uh, uh, Africa and for, uh, uh, for other countries, which is absolutely uh, important. We were just now discussing uh, uh, possibilities of uh, uh, cooperation uh, between uh, uh, Africa and, uh, and China. And, and he was explaining about the institutions that have come up in China, a newly established institution of, uh, of uh, uh, China-Africa uh, partnership and shaping uh, the broad uh, industrial development strategies and particularly the role of multinationals from uh, China, what kind of role uh, they are playing uh, in this. Uh, on the RCEP front, uh, I requested Professor Mohanty to chair this morning because uh, uh, he uh, just um, some time back finished for Reserve Bank of India a mega study on India-China trade dynamics. Uh, this exclusively focuses on key triggers for uh, the deficits, what sectors are contributing to the deficits, how the uh, non-tariff barriers are, are emerging, and one very important suggestion that he has made in the paper, uh, Professor Song Hong, is about uh, uh, establishing a joint commission uh, to look into uh, uh, the whole issue of trade dynamics between us. There have been some efforts in terms of uh, addressing uh, the joint deficit through uh, dialogues. And 2011, the first uh, meeting was held, uh, which was led by uh, Montex Singh to, uh, uh, to address the economic cooperation. And then uh, from there, uh, successive rounds have uh, uh, further strengthen the scope and discussion, but I think some concrete measures are required given whatever is the source of uh, statistics, the deficit is between uh, uh, 65 billion dollars to 70 billion dollars. So this deficit as you you were telling me, you have heard it since you landed here, everybody's talking about trade deficit. So, so that is a mega issue and I know, uh, but as you would agree in uh, 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 CPTPP and other platforms, 
the larger economies have got the due concessions that they require, whether you uh, look at uh, uh, the uh, Japan's uh, uh, trade concessions that they have got or concessions that uh, others could get, even uh, uh, the, the uh, US in several of their FTAs have uh, concessions for their specific sectors for very, uh, very long, even as high as 30 years. So now that the United States is opposing for special and differential treatment in WTO, you find that the U.S. has uh, uh, ensured uh, the, uh, uh, the special and differential treatment for U.S. economy in several of their free trade agreements, even with South Korea. So, so uh, a country which is uh, not as advanced as U.S., per capita income is not uh, uh, that much uh, different. So the U.S. could ensure uh, a concession for the U.S. Uh, uh, automobile industry and also for U.S. pharmaceutical industry vis-a-vis -vis South Korea. So we see uh, uh, this tendency of uh, uh, ensuring uh, gain of your own national industry and denying it at the global level. So that kind of uh, uh, a single undertaking is, uh, is no more prevalent in trade arrangements and this uh, has been India's position in the negotiations uh, since 2015. Uh, in our set of differential uh, uh, tariff structures and that's where uh, China's role is extremely important when we can uh, uh, bring in the single undertaking uh, as, as a mega issue. And as uh, Professor Song Hong, uh, you would agree, uh, uh, the non-tariff barriers uh, between India and China also require a sort of uh, 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 thorough review in terms of how uh, we are going forward and in what way uh, uh, India-China can work together to address uh, the uh, whole question of uh, 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 NTPs. And last point uh, that I want to uh, mention here uh, is in terms of specific goods and services. So uh, uh, putting them together in the uh, trade negotiation. Because as you know, India's exports and centrality of services sector in our GDP is extremely high. And, and uh, the resistance not to bring in uh, services in the negotiation and focus only on goods probably is also an area where India and China should cooperate because for India uh, to uh, have domestic acceptance of the RCEP, it is absolutely essential for us to uh, uh, look like what uh, the Chinese phrase very popular is win-win. Uh, so, so if I use your phrase of win-win, uh, I think it is very important for us to see that goods and services together move in the ASEP context and, and for any government and uh, more so in a democratic setting, industry requires this kind of uh, uh, sort of traction uh, when they do not uh, uh, see the traction coming in and possibility of acceptance of uh, uh, their market and their uh, earnings, they would be completely resistant to it. And this is what is pu pushing government to the core. And for last eight months after con consistent efforts, we are not going to move forward. So I'm very glad that uh, today you accepted our invitation. You have chosen a theme on which everybody here would be having some view about and some expectation from you. So I do not want to create any stress for you. It is, it is absolutely, uh, I mean, just speak out uh, whatever you feel like and, and, and we would be respecting that. So, so that, that goes without saying. You have uh, written substantively on Chinese strategy in ASEP. You have also articulated China uh, uh, ASEAN uh, relationship. So, so um, uh, you have a huge experience, and I very warmly welcome you. And I'm so glad that uh, uh, after uh, 12 years, you are back in RIS and RIS platform. So, I thank you once again. A very warm welcome to RIS. Uh, I would now request uh, uh, Professor Mohanty uh, to lead us. Uh, and and uh, uh, my idea is that uh, we would request you for. 20-25 uh, minutes address and then since uh, room is uh, full with the, some of the most brilliant minds in Delhi on, on trade negotiations so we would also hear them and as I said uh, uh, we would have to move forward as I uh, told you in the morning when you talk about uh, Belt and Road Initiative and uh, some of us here are working on Asia-Africa Growth Corridor. Idea is not of competition 
but complementarity and cooperation. So how uh, uh, some of our uh, infrastructure projects, some of our trade initiatives, some of our science technology initiatives, they all can move forward, particularly in a context when uh, unilateral wars are on and, and uh, uh, China-US trade war is some, something which is uh, overarching over several of the uh, entities across. So I would uh, uh, request you to reflect on, uh, on RCEP India-China uh, and uh, also if you want to uh, bring in any other issue that you feel uh, appropriate and consistent, I would first request Professor Mohanty and, and, and uh, he would chair. The Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sachin Ji. Uh, very good morning to everybody. Welcome, warm well, well, welcome to you. As you know that uh, when uh, uh, President Trump came to power, suddenly <coughs> the entire wave of uh, discussion related to mechanism stopped, TPP stopped. But uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, some period of time, again, in a new set, CPTPP came into existence and the, the again, the field for mega regional has again come up in a very big way. So towards that end, CPTPP, RCEP, there could be many other mega regionals that we can see in the coming years. It is uh, pretty well uh, uh, that uh, we know that uh, uh, from RCEP we are going to get a lot of uh, uh, welfare effects for most of the participating countries, including that of India. But uh, there are many teething issues. Uh, I, I recall that uh, in 2003 onwards, RIS uh, uh, took the initiative of uh, doing research on a topic known as JASIC. JASIC uh, means Japan, uh, ASEAN, China, India, and Korea. It's very close to that of RCEP that how this grouping can really lead us through in Asia. So uh, the, the whole idea of RCEP is not very new to India and we are for it. But, the, but we have to understand that there are so many pithing problems in that which needs to be addressed, particularly between India and China. As uh, 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 Professor Chaturvedi said, just some time back, RS did a study on India China. And we try to see uh, the issues greatly in details. At a very disagreed uh, 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 level of uh, um, trade analysis, we saw that there are several pr uh, products where China has not competitiveness but have large market access in India because of <coughs> non price factors. So that uh, 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 gives us the idea that there is quite large space for us to negotiate. If it is a question of a trade deficit, bilateral trade deficit, it is a not a major concern for us. If it is based on pure competitiveness, but if competitiveness is not there, but uh, um, trade deficit is growing bilaterally, it is a definitely concern. And therefore, there is a need uh, for looking at this uh, issue very closely. NTPs, as you mentioned, is one area uh, where uh, uh, it is a major concern. I uh, assure you that trade deficit with China will be there with India. It is a growing uh, industrial economy and it has put more uh, demand for industrial products, for its uh, industrialization, and therefore it will be more dependent on China. But Many areas where you can reduce tariff can also be addressed simultaneously. And therefore, there should be some concrete step in, in this regard uh, uh, to see, uh, should see to that that the deficit is reduced. So far, RCB is concerned. I, I think, again, it is between India and China. And one has to see that how India can uh, get uh, large uh, waivers in terms of liberalizing uh, its uh, uh, economy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the rest of the group and uh, if you can really focus on this issue that could be quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory to you. Yeah. Uh, it's my great pleasure to come here and uh, uh, 
uh, as suppose this is an uh, uh, informal meeting, so uh, not, uh, not expect so many yeah, uh, uh, Indian colleagues to join us for these uh, meetings. And then, first, uh, thanks, uh, Sachin, yeah, uh, to invite me to uh, this uh, very important institute. And uh, already, uh, more than 10 years ago, uh, we have a very close uh, cooperation with the RIS. And that time is uh, Najat uh, Kumar. Yeah, I have many times to visit our institute and also China's. We have uh, other cooperations together. And uh, we, we're very uh, happy to have continue our uh, cooperation with Sachin and also in the future for more cooperations. And uh, just as uh, Professor Sachin uh, mentioned about, for example, for the experience of China and uh, India. Uh, economic development can be shared with other countries, especially uh, with African countries. And uh, also, uh, uh, science and technology and many processes for both of us uh, can be shared. And uh, today's and, uh, the topic is uh, China, India, and uh, ASA. I, 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 I want to, uh, to emphasize a uh, third point for, for these issues. First one uh, is that uh, ASA is very important. Uh, for, for us, uh, for India and for, for China, and also for Asia, and even for the, uh, uh, for the world in terms of, especially for the multilateral systems. And for China, it's very important because we have three tensions with the U.S. in uh, last two years, and also uh, this is very challenging for, for us uh, because the uh, uh, U.S. uses uh, uh, 301 uh, articles of domestic laws to investigation of China. And uh, what they want is only some of changes from Chinese side, and they do nothing for these negotiations. So this is uh, most difficult for China to make some uh, concession, and also uh, we need some equal deals with the USA, but it is difficult if we based on this platform. And also, uh, you, you may see what's the reasons behind these negotiations. This is one of the reasons yeah, for that. So uh, at this moment, for China, we, we need more yeah, uh, co uh, cooperation with other countries. And also, uh, we want, uh, from China's side, we want to liberalize more our economy, even with, uh, with some tensions with the USA. And in the last uh, two years, we already uh, liberalized our economy. For example, some of the sector was uh, liberalized, liberalized to the Foreign direct domestic and also reduce our tariff after the WTI sessions and uh, uh, reduce uh, unilateral. And the second one is that it's very important for Asia uh, because Asia is the uh, world uh, uh, extensive and also intensive uh, regional production network and our global production network. It's very dynamic. Uh, especially for manufacturing and also for service uh, development in these regions. If we can integrate more, and also uh, with more changes in the world, especially in the tree regime, for example, from the US side, they want uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, unilateral uh, ways to deal with other uh, tree partners' relations, with not only with, with China, but also with uh, Korea, also with uh, NAFTA uh, members as well. So it's difficult, uh, and also if this uh, changes in the uh, U.S. and also other uh, countries, yes, it's, uh, it's much more harmful for these regions because we depend on regional international work, uh, production network depend on some more cooperation among regions and uh, more free uh, flows of trade and uh, investment. So if we can have, uh, for example, uh, RCEP can finish this year, uh, that will be strong support for multilateral system and also more strong uh, promote of the uh, in, uh, regional integration uh, furthermore. And also another one is uh, uh, also inter-regional, we, we also have some restrictions, especially from the Chinese side. Uh, even without the China and the U.S. Uh, trade tensions uh, in the last two years. Already Chinese uh, industry and also uh, uh, economy was a restructuring uh, because of the 
uh, cross uh, 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 domestic, for example, labels and land and also policies changes. And more and more uh, manufacturing capacity move up. And uh, in the last few years, it's moved from uh, close regions to the middle part of China and uh, to the west part of China. And now uh, more and more move up, uh, move out from China. And the uh, uh, US and, the tree, uh, and the China's trade tensions give more pleasures for more firms uh, and more uh, uh, manufacturing capacity move up. And, uh, recently, you can get this uh, news from uh, different uh, uh, yeah, journals and also newspapers, for example, from uh, what uh, uh, journals, uh, what uh, street journals uh, report for, for the, some of the uh, manufacturing more from China. But it's difficult because uh, we have huge capacity so in terms of manufacturing. But it's difficult to find uh, uh, very good uh, locations uh, to, to have this uh, capacity. For example, uh, some of the uh, Canadian countries for in, uh, for uh, Vietnam and also for Cambodia for some of the industry. But it's difficult uh, to to find uh, uh, the uh, surplus, uh, especially the components and parts to uh, support this uh, manufacturing there. And uh, it takes time. But unfortunately, during this process, and uh, we noted that it's Indians, not always in the list of the candidate for the uh, uh, manufacturing uh, more for the uh, firms to, to make jobs. Uh, and uh, for example, for some of the uh, labor intensive uh, industri uh, industries, uh, textile and clothes, the few uh, locations are in Cambodia, Vienna, but also even Bangladesh and also Africa, some of African countries. There are unfortunately no Indians at least in this, uh, is put in this uh, list. So, um, <clears throat> so uh, I think uh, the second one is uh, from this regions is very important. And also uh, during this uh, region, inter-regional restrictions, we, we, we want uh, more uh, institution platform to promote <coughs> the uh, deep integration of uh, these regions international uh, production network. And the uh, uh, third one is, uh, is also is very important for India. So we, we know that it is, uh, uh, in terms of the manufacturing development, India is uh, from 2000, after 2000, like, uh, is integrated into the uh, global service value chains. And you get a lot of the service, overseas service, uh, yeah, uh, orders and also integrated into the world uh, service uh, value chains. And uh, just what, uh, 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 like China's integrated into the regional and uh, global manufacturing value chains. So y your, your trade deficit in, in the service is a uh, yeah, surplus. Uh, and then uh, if we look at the whole sectors in India, for well, service sectors, uh, compared with the uh, uh, industrial countries, it's uh, it's not a, a integrated service sector is a competitive. It's only some of the uh, parts of function is a very competitive. Yeah. It's uh, similar to, to China's uh, in terms of uh, manufacturing management. For example, textile and clothes industry, we, we, we are more uh, stronger in manufacturing, uh, in production. Yeah. And uh, it's a supply of the uh, um, modulation brand and uh, things. Uh, so, uh, global brand for them. But uh, uh, for the local, we didn't have so much local brand uh, as a global brand. So this is uh, one of the so, things. So for India, it's very important because uh, as a, a big countries and uh, so many populations, and uh, if you want to uh, to uh, to produce more jobs for for people, especially for uh, low and middle scale peoples, you must need uh, manufacturers and the uh, large scale manufacturers, not, not uh, only based on the service. So it's, uh, we, we know that is from some book for that it's uh, limited jobs and also high skill. How about the, uh, the low skill and the middle skill people? It's so many, and this is one of the potentials of India. Uh, so. Uh, uh, if uh, we have a there, yeah, it's uh, 
one hand is uh, is more deep of into the regional contact network, and also more opportunities for other countries, especially for Indians, to get integrated in these processes. And uh, if uh, and, uh, uh, Indians uh, didn't make some changes, and other many other countries, especially for Vietnam, for Cambodia, and uh, and also Bangladesh, and also others may, may be here to take these opportunities. So I, uh, I think this is a very good opportunity for Indians to to uh, to catch up and to to work up some of the strategy and policy. And another second one is, uh, is uh, yeah, also uh, ASEAN uh, and uh, 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 Indians is is, uh, is uh, some of the experience of China's. Uh, we, we know that it's, uh, for the now for us it's a uh, negotiation process is the key uh, issue is, is India. It's, uh, we're waiting for India. But uh, from the Indian perspective, the key issue is, is, is China. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to, uh, 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 with China, one of the, the, uh, the issues, one of this is the trade deficit, of course. And uh, also, um, <clears throat> maybe uh, if we have the RCEP there, Maybe more trade deficit with China. Yeah, this is a concern from the Indian side. So uh, I want to give some uh, uh, comments for these uh, concerns uh, from Chinese perspective, especially from Chinese uh, experience uh, uh, in the last uh, 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 yeah uh, more than two decades or three decades uh, our experience of that. And uh, when China get uh, open up to the outside world, especially in the land areas, at that time, also we almost always other countries have trade deficit, especially with Japan and also with USA and with other industry countries. What we export is mainly is uh, 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 commodity goods, agriculture goods, and also some of the manners for that. Yeah, but uh, we, we it's uh, at the uh, uh, 1980s, we, we have some of the uh, textile and cruise industries, but uh, not so much. It's mainly it's, uh, commodities to export. But uh, uh, from the mid 1980s, we got integrated with the regional network. At that time, uh, you must me uh, remember the Plaza uh, 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 Accord Agreement in 1985. At that time, it's uh, uh, Operations of the Asian needs and the Japanese yuan and the Asian needs currencies uh, appreciation very much uh, based on the US dollar. So, a lot of the industries, especially labor intensive industries, lost their competitive advantage in those e economies. They want to move out. At that time, China had a very good strategy to welcome this investment, especially in the coastal regions, because we are neighbors with the Korea, with uh, Japan, uh, also with our uh, province, it's Taiwan and also Singapore, Hong Kong. So it's a very, we have the policy to encourage these integrations. It's a very quickly, it's a may, no more than 10 years, it's a China, China's trade structure is changing dramatically. For that time, it's a, from 1993, uh, we, uh, the balance it, uh, the balance uh, sheet of trade is uh, tend to surplus, and also the surplus is big and big at that time. What's the reason for that? Because we integrate. On the one hand, we import a lot of the components and parts from uh, Korea, from Taiwan, from uh, Japan, and also from uh, uh, Singapore, and, uh, and some of the uh, materials are the menus from ASEAN countries. And, uh, even though we have very big trade deficit with Korea, with Taiwan, and also sometimes with Japan. And uh, from 2003 to 2004, we have very big deficit with the resource export countries like Australia, and also Latin American countries, and African countries, uh, a lot of the resource and energy export. Yeah. Why for that? Because so we, we one hand, we import these component parts, and the other hand, we in China we processing and manufacturing and assemble these uh, components apart, and then we have the final tools to export 
to the EU market, to the US market, and also some of them to go to the Japanese market, and also uh, Asian needs market as well. So this is the structure. Even now, it's not changes from the 19, early 1990s to now. It's, uh, if we look at uh, uh, China's trade uh, balance sheet with, my, uh, with, three, uh, with our uh, partners, always we the, the uh, uh, Korea, Taiwan, Japan, and, uh, and also some of the uh, resource export countries, Australia, Brazil, and also others. And on the other hand, we have three circles with the U.S., with the EU's, with also other, other countries. Uh, uh, recently, only recently with <coughs> India. In terms of uh, bilateral trade with India, we each year with something export uh, seven billion uh, uh, US dollars export to India. This seven billion US dollars is something only three percent of Chinese export. We export something two pound uh, four trillion uh, each year uh, recently. So uh, in terms of the trade tax from China, we didn't want to have so much surplus of India. So it's it's uh, yeah it's something yeah it's uh, uh, it's only natural in, in some sense. So uh, what's the uh, the some of the experience or, or some lessons from uh, can be learned from Chinese experience is that is uh, if India wants to to uh, to change the deficit, especially for the manufacturing deficit, you you cannot based on the traditional. The integrated industry you want to develop in the, in the domestic uh, market. Uh, just what uh, uh, the, the Professor uh, Baldwin, uh, Richard Baldwin, had a book as a Global Convergence. It's, uh, in the past, we, we always have the integrated industry developed in, in one country, but now it's fragmented across different countries. So uh, the you, you cannot uh, based on this and uh, um, change your, your uh, uh, trade <coughs> balance with the other members. And the <coughs> Chinese experience is that we integrate in the regional network and also uh, import a lot of the components and export some things. You make best use of your labels, especially low scale and mid scale labels. Yeah, so uh, this export earn a lot of the uh, money, especially for the trade surplus, because it's import something and export something. It's the, the middle side is what you've done. It's the uh, value added of the local labels. Yeah, so this is the, the big change. For, for. So my, my suggestion then is uh, uh, for if Indians want to, to change it, the uh, balancing, especially tree balancing with us uh, members, especially with China, I think you should yeah, integrate in this uh, regional network. If, if you're outside this regional network, it's only dependent on the uh, uh, existing components and agricultural goods. I don't think you can yeah, balance yeah, yeah, your import, especially in India, import a lot of the natural resource, uh, uh, the energy. And, uh, yes, it's, it's difficult. So uh, this is uh, uh, the second point I wanted to emphasize. And also, uh, in terms of that, it's also not only focus on the what now the uh, existing uh, competitive advantage, like uh, pharmacies, uh, pharmaceuticals, and also automobile. You must to explore more other industries as well. You have much more potentials if you make use of your, uh, uh, your, your advantage, especially labels and also the, in, uh, the high skilled uh, workers and also it's a very dynamic private sectors there. Mm. And uh, if we, we, we look at the, uh, the components uh, changes of Chinese export, and uh, under the 80s, many is the agriculture and uh, commodity goods. And after that, from 1990s, is a lot of the new uh, export, electronic, machinery, and uh, now it's everything, almost. Yeah. And also, uh, <coughs> during these processes, uh, not only you want to do something, and also 
uh, corporations and uh, investment, foreign investment, they provide some of the trainings and also network of the uh, 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 the sightings uh, overseas uh, for your export and or even some the brand for that. So it's much more easier to get integrated. Otherwise, yeah, if you want those all the things uh, integrated and also uh, from the beginning, it's, it's a long process for that. So this is the second thing I want to uh, to emphasize here. Uh, and also, uh, uh, nothing that is uh, uh, it's, uh, in terms of the India and the China's uh, relations, especially for trade relations. What we, what I'm sorry, the uh, China's have so much trade surplus with India. And uh, actually, if we look at uh, what happened uh, for China, especially for some of the regime uh, related to China, for, for example, for China's Deng accessions, we have very uh, unfair uh, discriminatory treatment for Chinese export. Uh, when China Deng for example, we have a safeguard mechanism for textile and clothing industries. Uh, in the world, it's 2005, ACT was ended, uh, all the quarter. The tax uh, tail and close quarter was ended. But uh, still, for four years for Chinese goods. And uh, another one is, uh, is for the uh, uh, very specific safeguard for Chinese export, Chinese goods. It's uh, for 12 years in China. And also, another one uh, is uh, for 15 years when China joined up to its anti dumping uh, cases, uh, China's uh, export, and also. Uh, the cost of the export can be used as a, uh, uh, as a uh, reference for, for uh, decide whether or not there is some dumping and how much of this dumping is. So is a uh, third country's uh, uh, cost was used. And then even now, this, uh, this is supposed to end in 2016, but the USA and the EU didn't uh, to implement their commitments. So this is some dispute still in Dominicals. So even we have some, yeah, this, uh, in, the, in terms of uh, Indians, and uh, each year, uh, actually uh, recently, each year we have got most uh, anti dumping cases from India. So first, uh, uh, India is uh, our, uh, our, China is uh, target uh, by, by India, so, so even more than EU's, than US's. Yes. So that's uh, what happened behind this. Uh, um, and the each year, and the, in terms of anti dumping China is recently some forty percent or fifty percent of these cases against Chinese goods, and the many from uh, EU, USA, and the large developed countries like uh, India, Argentina, and Brazil, Mexico, and so. So and the. Uh, and I, I think, uh, yeah, in terms of the uh, uh, tree, uh, bilateral trees, uh, if we, if India uh, use uh, asset to integrate in the regional uh, network, uh, no matter China's was the supplies of the components and parts, or China's was the, uh, the export market for India. So we, we hope, yeah, more integrated. Yes, uh, depend on different countries that uh, <coughs> that. Yeah, and then we, we can change our yeah, uh, balance of trade. <coughs> and uh, also, uh, last one is, uh, is uh, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, yes. last one is uh, about the uh, uh, <coughs> non tariff uh, barriers. And yesterday, we already <coughs> discussed these issues. And then, uh, my suggestion is that is, uh, if we uh, from the Indian side, you identify some of the number of uh, barriers there between us. Uh, during the uh, ASTE processing and uh, the regime processing, we can't have bilateral negotiations uh, simultaneously. And also, we, we can't have multilateral negotiations for the ASTE uh, platform to deal with these this issues. But, uh, um, and also, uh, the most important thing is that it's, uh, uh, Depend, uh, uh, also according to the past experience of China and ASEAN uh, 
啊，很贵的公司啊，类似，因为 some of the 呃呃呃 market access is opportunity is there, but a lot of the members cannot to to use this opportunity. And the, for example, some of the ASEAN countries ask China to help them to use the opportunity to export uh, their goods to the Chinese market. Yeah. And the, yes, this also uh, Pegasus and uh, from Indi Indonesia gives some a uh, lot of very good examples for, for this. For example, for medicine export, there is some standards uh, from the import countries. And uh, if you not, cannot meet these standards, you can export to, to this. <coughs> but uh, uh, if we have some platforms to, uh, to work together to uh, help uh, the export countries like India or China to, uh, uh, to learn or to, to, uh, to uh, get familiar with these standards, it would be much more easier for, for this export. Yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, I, I should I should stop here. And I welcome some of the comments and the questions. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Professor Song Hong, for a very, very uh, insightful uh, presentation. You have covered a very vast spectrum and have also made some uh, RCEP specific issues, but also India China trade uh, sort of solutions that you see are, are important. So I now open the floor and, and, and we would have discussions. General, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, although we're meeting you after 12 years, there's not much change in you. I think it's the trade surplus that is helping <laughs> Okay, in the spirit of frankness, mm -hmm. there are three deficits between India and China. The trust deficit, which is improving, Xi Jinping is coming also. The trade deficit, which is very important, and then the border deficit. Now on the trade deficit, you see, India is no longer a part, is not a part of TPP. We're not quite in our set, okay? Now, which means politically, the domination, in spite of engagement between China, the Chinese domination will be total if India is not there, the, the second largest economic power in Asia. So that's, politically, I feel we should both be there. Then only there can be better engagement, especially all the terms that you have underlined for improving the cooperation. On the economic front, on the economic front, you know our GDP has got, it's on the downward trend. It's on the downward trend. We're talking of 5% every quarter. What I want to know from you, or perhaps even our distinguished Indian, uh, the chair and uh, Bhante, uh, by joining the RCEP, there is a lot of opposition in India from the industries. I was in the top management of TCS for 10 years because of the tariffs, problems, and so on. So that reluctance is there. But that's an internal problem. If we join ourselves, is this Chinese over flooding? Is this Chinese dumping in the region going to stop? But then that will motivate us to join the RCEP. That's one. And if you don't allow our information technology, I've just said I'm from the TCS. You know, we are the largest and the best in Asia. But we haven't made any progress in China at all because there are so many obstacles placed. So in your suggestions, get the information technology more. And now that artificial intelligence has come, <coughs> 5G is going to come. And finally, from the Indian point of view, we're not members of TPP. We're not on the RCEP. We're not even members of the APEC. Something is wrong. Is there something wrong with India? We're not members of all these three organizations. And November is not very far. So I think we'll have to do something very quickly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ambassador. Uh, Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Professor Sung Hong for such an interesting and lively talk. And I just want to also state at the outset that I've been a follower of Chinese economic science and technology policy, and I think they've leveraged uh, their domestic situation optimally to produce uh, very dynamic growth. And I agree with you that we must learn from China's experiences. But the lessons I derive from your experience is a little different from what you have projected. And uh, apart from uh, understanding India's specific situation against the background of current economic slowdown and uh, the crash of the manufacturing sector really in India, uh, I wanted to mention that in the 90s, uh, China implemented its policies on reprocessing trade before it joined the WTO. 
So you had FDI performance requirements, you had very stringent in fact requirements of FDI and you had high tariffs, you had very good um, uh, tariff structure which did not penalize you know, value addition in your country, in fact it encouraged it. So that's how you managed to get a huge relocation apart from the huge investment that gun shopping um, made in uh, infrastructure in the coastal areas. So uh, that situation doesn't apply at all in India. We have liberalized tariffs, we have no performance requirements on FDI and therefore our experts, especially in the Institute of Industrial Development uh, uh, Studies, has, have found that FDI is not going into value addition. It's not going into greenfield manufacturing. So this model may not work in India and therefore I would request that you would also understand India's specific problems right now. In fact, we want to follow, at least uh, we have been advocating in our little group, we follow China's development strategy, but that is completely at variance with what you are suggesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I take one more and then uh, uh, we uh, request you for response. I have a very brief question. Uh, you stated, you know, that Chinese firms have started moving out and they see uh, attractive opportunities in Vietnam, Bangladesh, uh, in Cambodia, you know, but not, India is not one of the attractive uh, countries, you know, as far as investments are concerned. Uh, can you give us three, four aspects that you would want to see change as far as Indian uh, business environment or economic environment is concerned? What would you list as three, four major things that India should be doing in terms of its policy to attract this kind of investment? Thank you. So somehow, yeah. should I request you? Uh, I don't see any more hands, so I request you to respond to these three questions. We can have another round. Yeah. Second round. Second. Okay. So, so. Thank you uh, for your questions. Uh, I want to reverse these uh, answers. Uh, yes. First, your question uh, is. Uh, uh, if we compare with at least uh, uh, East Asian countries, always compete with each other in terms of uh, get more investment, especially for some of the export-oriented greenfield investment. So uh, uh, in the last uh, long, uh, ten or twenty years, yes, Vietnam have very good uh, strategy for that. They learn a lot of things. Uh, from other countries, not only China, from uh, ASEAN countries, or from uh, Singapore as well. If we compare, if you, you get a, a first study from Vietnam, what's the, the uh, incentive of the uh, local government was provided to the investment there? And also the environment of the investment here, you can find difference. Yeah. Uh, they, they have some yeah, very yeah, generous uh, initiative there. And this is one thing. Another one is uh, it's, uh, the government and uh, also the labels there. Also, also the, if, if you want to uh, set up a factory, there are landers, uh, electricians, and also labels. So all these things was uh, something was, uh, was much more easier to deal with in Vietnam and with Cambodia. And also, uh, because of these uh, policies there, yeah, as uh, more investment and uh, more link of this investment work together, and uh, there is uh, upstream and downstream for a Yeah. So my suggestion is, if you want to change uh, India's uh, environment or uh, investment, you can uh, compare with other ASEAN countries, also neighbors. Yeah, what's the difference of your, your uh, strategy and policy there? You can learn some things from, from that. Because uh, in the last two years, we, we, we do a few studies for the uh, regional corporations for the textile and clothes industries uh, in, 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 in Asia. We do some few studies for them. Yeah. And the <coughs> second one is uh, for, for, uh, for China's uh, FDI, yeah, it's, uh, uh, and also strategies. Yes, you're right. Yeah, chunks have uh, separate uh, all the uh, different uh, regimes in terms of FDI. For the export-oriented FDIs, it's uh, much more, yeah, it's free. What uh, the import for components and parts and also materials and also machinery 
if you import it and produce something for export. Yeah, duty is free, even from the 1980s. As now is also. Yeah, so if we look at the Chinese tariff and also uh, uh, import, it's half, and in the 1980s, even more than half of the Chinese import and export is from this processing tree, we, we call this processing tree. It's totally free. And also a lot of the uh, uh, economic zones is, of, is to promote this development. Yeah, so this reason is so much investment, especially greenfield investment. Yeah. And now, uh, the last question about the, uh, the amazing question, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's a very big question. But uh, uh, from Chinese experience, I think the uh, most important thing is that is, uh, uh, is if we have a liberalized processes, and uh, uh, for example, for, for China's WTO exceptions, and uh, some, somebody always think, yeah, it's, uh, when China liberalizes, uh, or when China joins the WTO, it's a uh, multilateral market or platform for China. But when China uh, gets uh, 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 trade uh, grows very fast than other members there. Uh, even the equal uh, uh, in, uh, equals, uh, environment in terms of export and uh, import there. Why China grows so, so fast compared with, for, for example, other countries during this process also joined up too, but didn't grow so fast uh, compared with China. The reasons are, it's a key reason are, it's a, the so same with the RCEP, if uh, RCEP was the same, yeah, maybe, yeah, it's China's uh, goods and uh, uh, more export to India. That's maybe, yeah, because, uh, maybe not, because the cost of uh, Chinese uh, export increase, and some of the industry may be more out from import from other countries of that. So the key issue there is the uh, is, uh, competitive advantage of the local industry. This is the key. If without these uh, uh, capacities, even with a lot of the uh, market opportunity, it's, it's, it's mean nothing for, for, for countries if without this capacity. Another point is that it's, uh, for uh, GTP and RC and uh, CPTPP and uh, also ASEAN, for China, uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, it's the last, uh, not only before the three tensions between China and the uh, USA. Uh, when TPP was a negotiation uh, at that time, China was prepared uh, or uh, in, in, in our domestically we wanted to join TPPs sometimes in the near future. Yeah, so not only for RCEP, but also we want to, uh, now we have the trade tensions with the uh, USA. Not only we, we want to join RCEP, and also we want to, for example, maybe to join CPTPPs uh, in the near future, and also we want to have uh, uh, China and Japan's Korea uh, FT agreement for that. <coughs> uh, even now, uh, some of the discussions, we want to have an FT agreement with USA yeah, if we have the equal negotiation process. So, uh, uh, I don't think uh, China's uh, RCEP is, uh, uh, is uh, it's, uh, we want to use this and, uh, to, to, to help India, I, I don't think so. Because, uh, yeah, uh, depending on, uh, uh, it's related to our economic development and uh, economic restrictions, we have more than RCEPs and also more uh, uh, priorities for that. Okay. Thank you, uh, Samhong. We have second round now. I already uh, recognized Dr. Kocher and Ambassador Bhatia. Uh, so first, uh, Dr. Sudhir Kocher. So welcome, uh, Samhong, again to RIS. And uh, you very rightly recollected it. And uh, you asserted that it will be an informal conversation. What we generally expect in informal conversation is that we can talk issues beyond their restricted boundaries, where we can limit only to trade, uh, clearance and all. Because uh, regional economic cooperation is, trade is a medium 
for that. And then we are going much beyond that, including to cultural. So I take your example as an example of Hume Sang that he came to India, learned a lot, India sent, uh, and the entire Buddhism is there in China. And why I am saying so is that uh, a few months back, I was there in uh, Indian Society of International Law, and a Chinese professor was there in law, and he was expecting Indians to see the cultural commonness as a means to develop the economic potentials of both the countries. If you may appreciate that uh, both China and India, they were the best beneficiaries of the Second World War via that atom bomb in Hiroshima. Because we got a form of wheat which had got the unknown genes at that time, which when properly used, they could give the revolution and also it rise. So wheat and rice revolution came at that time. And that thing of the 60s, you took forward up to 80s to see your strength as this agricultural commodities, right? So now it is about the agricultural commodity. I just wanted to bring you into, you said the strength is manufacturing sector for China, the strength is services sector for India, but you were silent on the production sector. And there is a lot of thing to explore in commonness and trade can be only a beginning point in that. And some of the agricultural communities which India is starting off. And second point, you said that uh, when we have already started this regional cooperation, bilateral has nothing to do. Within, within the regional, every member bilaterally will be very, very important and prominent to deal with each other. And this is where China may we see as an opportunity. And then this trade as a means of mutual engagement in open economy. We are not closing, we are just opening. So that beginning, with that open mind, I think there will be prizes. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Kocher. Ambassador Bhatia and then Dr. Makija. The middle one. The middle one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, as you know, uh, the fate of RCEP is hanging in balance today. Uh, naturally, the decisions could be taken by the governments, but they inevitably are influenced by uh, people such as those sitting in this room because they tend to impact on policy and therefore your visit is very timely and it's very important. Uh, I approach this from the political, diplomatic and the strategic perspectives. They all will be taken into consideration but at the end of the day it is the trade and economic considerations which really will weigh with Delhi most importantly. So in that context we heard that of the 16, there are some countries which would be quite happy to move forward on our set without India. There are other countries which have said that no, this is not a good approach. India should be part of our set, otherwise our set will not be so weighty or significant. So my question to you sir is, what is China's uh, perspective on this? Do you want an RCEP of 16 or do you want an RCEP of 15? And if you want RCEP of 16, what exactly are the Chinese, what exactly is the Chinese side willing to, you know, offer to bring us in? Because, you know, your fundamental prescription that India should join regional value chain and then everything will work out. We are, we are sitting just a few weeks away from the negotiations to be completed. I don't think in two, two, two months mm -hmm. India can suddenly overnight join regional value chain. So the, the suggestion you are making sounds very good, but it is impractical. What is your real prescription and perception of this? Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Bhatia. Uh, Dr. Mokhijia. I speak as a common citizen. My question is a tool, may we please ignore it. Uh, 
those who are familiar with the history of China of the 19th century might empathize with certain uh, aggressive acts, occasional aggressive acts. China has got uh, boundary dispute with large number of neighbors. Uh, I'm coming to the main point. My point is that having come this, this far as a large economic power and China wants to consolidate its position further, would it not be in the China's interest to avoid a geographical context, resolve these boundary issues, which often result in, I think, emotional anger rather than any a sanity in the trade and commerce uh, point of view. But there is something called idealism in international diplomacy. I don't know whether that stands to today. But I feel that occasionally um, certain uh, boundary issues uh, overshadow uh, the trade concerns and uh, geopolitical uh, relations. That's Thank you. Thanks. I, yeah, no, no, Professor Jan. Uh, thank you, Professor. Um, I just have a very two candid questions to you. As we have observed in the last five years, your services sector is galloping ahead. Are you creating a buffer so as not to allow India's services sector to encroach into your strategic space that you are making provisions for it already? And second, when you talk about regional value chain, how much do you think can China surrender its topmost ranking with regard to regional value chain? Because invariably, it's a China where the products usually come out. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chia. Uh, I do not see any more hands. Anybody decide? Or, uh, yes, come, please. Use the mic there. Thank you, Professor. I would like you to address, if possible, the attitude of China to the future role of the dollar in international trade. Given that uh, cryptocurrencies are developing very fast in China too, and given that uh, there is even at the level of central banks, last Jackson Hole meeting, a discussion about the possibility that the dollar will be replaced by another form of international exchange unit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I do not see anyone. So now final uh, round, what uh, uh, General Chopra I started with. Oh, Harshan, I'm sorry, I don't see you. I, so. I was thinking there will be a third round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah. 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 But thank you, thank you very much. And thank you for a very interesting uh, uh, talk, which, which was very substantive. And the questions have been also very substantive. Actually, what uh, the general outline about deficits, I think today the biggest deficit is the trust deficit. Mm -hmm. And when we are interacting with other nations, be it in the context of a trade agreement or uh, a comprehensive economic partnership like RCEP, or we are trying to develop within that platforms of bilateral collaboration and cooperation. We, we are seeing both self-interest and building trust. <coughs> you mentioned uh, the treatment of uh, China when China joined uh, the WTO. And I agree with you. I mean, this was very harsh. But it was harsh also because the Chinese leadership wanted it to contribute to reform. So where I see the Chinese interaction is that they have made great efforts, strategically very important ones. And they have been oriented far more towards themselves than in building trust. And in that process, now with India, because the question which was asked is it RCEP 15 or RCEP 16? My understanding is that China is somewhere in between. It, uh, it will not refuse an RCEP 15, but if it gets an RCEP 16, it would rather like it because it get, gives access to the 
the Indian market, not because India will get access to China. That's the point I'm trying to say, that there's an asymmetry in the, in my understanding, there's an asymmetry in thinking of China on how it interacts with nations. So what is it that China can do to make it RCEP 16 so that India comes in? Because India wants to be in. India recognizes the value which you have emphasized of RCEP. But India has to be in, in a situation where it has oxygen, it has comfort to manage everything. And even multilaterally, that's the way people do it, the trade facilitation agreement and you know the, the telecom uh, reference paper, etc. They give you support. And the two countries which actually have to reach conclusion to make it RCEP 16 are India and China. You know, the, the green, the, 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 the red and the orange in between. India and China are prominent in the red. So they'll be asked to go to another room and get solutions. Is your understanding that the incentives for China today are to provide India that space in some way? And I, I can tell you how trust could be built. I know there was a, a list of individual states of China buying from India so that the exports of India increased. So that list was just killed. So in your writings, can you propagate the idea of China building trust so that India engages and then India also opens up? That, that is the key point. I want to get one, your perspective. Will it happen? Second, do you think it's a useful way of trying to push things? Thank you, uh, Harsha. Anybody else, if I haven't seen or missed out, uh, I don't see. So now, uh, yes, uh, uh, well, please, yeah. Now that everybody has spoken, yeah. I would like to say that India-China cooperation mm. in the electronics industry, mm. whom I advise, mm. is doing very, very well. Mm. And a uh, lot of investment has come. In fact, Chinese companies, Vivo, Oppo, are leading the show. And in spite of the duty that we have put on mobile phones, China is exporting a lot of components to India. And these are being assembled in India in a very, very big way with the technology coming in. A lot of Chinese investment is coming. So I would like to tell Professor Hong that India is not that bad in promoting trade and investment from China. And there is no anti-dumping duty and safeguards in the electronics sector. I'd like to say that. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Goyal. Thank you. Uh, so now we close the question answer round and I request you for uh, your final response and then would request Professor Mohanty uh, for some reason. Yes, uh, thanks. Uh, so there's a uh, lot of questions. And, uh, uh, some of the questions I can't, uh, I can't uh, clear again. I will ask uh, once more. And then uh, the also reverse. I think uh, yes, it's, uh, uh, for electronic uh, sectors and also for other sectors as well, we can have uh, many uh, uh, sector levels, uh, associations, business association cooperations. This is uh, uh, more efficient. And also, this is one of the uh, yesterday solutions and also from other experience, for, for example, if I platform, they have some <laughs> association, uh, business associations, corporations to deal with some of the regulation for that. Electronic is one of them, and also we hope other uh, sectors as well. And uh, also trust deficit, I think, yeah, it's, it's a very important uh, uh, things. And, uh, for, uh, for my, uh, uh, so, uh, my personal thing, I think, yeah, it's uh, ASEP maybe is a, one of the very good opportunity for us, for uh, India and uh, uh, China to change it, to build, build our uh, trust, yeah, uh, based on these uh, uh, platforms. It's a, uh, yes, business uh, associations one of that, and also maybe we can have some bilateral uh, consulting uh, committee, uh, uh, Association or uh, commitment uh, commi committees for that, and uh, also, for example, for uh, China's uh, 
trade promotion associations can cooperate with CII for some of the uh, bilateral issues and also different levels to have uh, to build more uh, even sector levels and also some of the uh, topic level and even the regional levels yeah to for, for this uh, deep cooperations and uh, yes uh, I think yes this is a very good uh, even the very uh, challenging issues for us but uh, I think it's very good opportunity for both of us to change our relations especially to use uh, building our trust and changing some things as well and, and uh, also uh, for remedies and also for uh, US dollars and uh, Yes, uh, uh, from from uh, uh, Chinese perspectives and uh, um, in terms of currency, I don't think uh, yet. Yeah, even in the last few years, uh, ten years, we uh, promote some of the uh, uh, internationalization of remedies. But uh, uh, US dollars, uh, we, we still uh, uh, yes linked to uh, US dollar, and uh, we still. Think yeah, US dollar is the, the, the most uh, important of the uh, of the uh, basic key currencies in the world. We, we, even in the long run, in the forty years or even half a century later, I don't think uh, Chinese remedy can replace US dollars. At that times, maybe it's only uh, several currencies together, just uh, like this uh, now. It's, uh, U.S. dollars, uh, euros, and also other uh, uh, currencies together to, to, to work uh, for this uh, international monetary system. It doesn't get China, uh, Chinese can go can, can up and that U.S. dollars for that. And the, another way is that, uh, yes, it's a service, uh, trading service, uh, yes, uh, 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 not only really for China's manufacturing getting integrated with uh, in, in the regional machines and also uh, for service as well, especially uh, China's and uh, uh, Japan's work together for some of the uh, software development with the uh, northeast uh, part of the China because uh, uh, that, uh, the, that region is a very close link with Japan's and also with the Asian some Asian uh, needs there. But uh, uh, even with this uh, uh, tree in service development and also uh, China's integrated in this regional uh, service regions, I don't think uh, China one uh, can compete or, or replace India. Because India uh, uh, is uh, very deep integrated in this uh, uh, regions and also uh, have very close uh, link with the uh, EU, with US uh, uh, service uh, industries. Yeah. And the uh, second question, sorry, I can You know, in terms of value addition networks, it invariably comes that the China is at the top of the ladder. Uh -huh. So which means the biggest beneficiary happens to be the China. Uh -huh. Do you think the time has come that there should be decentralization of this, you know, uh, the, the uh, production network? Where you have specific niche yeah. products coming out from different yes, yes. because then it adds to the value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, I don't think uh, yes, it's uh, only uh, several uh, uh, industries who uh, are especially uh, labor intensive. Uh, uh, not uh, more, not all of these labor intensive uh, manufacturing more are from China, but it is several. Uh, and uh, during this processing and also more and more import of this uh, more art label uh, goods. So uh, maybe in the future, some more uh, import from China and also a Chin a Chinese market more focus on some of the, for some marketing in the local market and also development of some local brand for Chinese market. And uh, as far as the regional and the global brand, uh, it's difficult. And even we look at, the, for example, the uh, closing industries, if we look at the Japan, yeah, it's more than yeah, half a century, it's difficult to, to develop from the Japanese brand uh, globally. Yeah. And then, um, yes, uh, 
Yes, uh, the, yeah. Sorry, your, your question, I, I didn't get your questions. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes. My question, uh, I repeat the question. Occasionally, uh, the geographical conflicts uh, overshadow the trade relations. It adds an emotional dimension to uh, the mutual, uh, can say, people to people uh, trust. And what my friend has said that uh, there is a certain amount of trust deficit that generally remains between the two countries. So for better trade relations, is it not better that uh, certain issues are resolved by China, not only with India, but there is all these neighbors, because somehow or the other, post 19th century, there has been a certain amount of geographical uh, conflict of China with its neighbors. I empathize with what happened between 1850 and 1900, but Thereafter, it seems that there is a certain amount of aggressive intent in the South China Sea and other areas. Probably China feels more insecure with its own position. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, in the, actually, in the past, uh, uh, Chinese uh, civilizations get uh, benefit a lot from Indians and uh, is a uh, town dynasty. Yes, it's a famous uh, yes, uh, Chinese uh, uh, yeah, come to India and get a lot of uh, famous, uh, yeah, document to China that had very uh, yeah, uh, intensive uh, impact for Chinese culture and also yeah, society. I think yeah, for, for this big country, we, yeah, we have very yeah, uh, deep uh, uh, culture uh, link, linkage. Yeah, we should have some... Yeah, more cooperation, not only yeah, uh, for economic issues, as well for culture and also education, and also for for more uh, young uh, uh, students exchanges and for, for this that program for that. And uh, uh, yes, and uh, so amazing questions are so from Chinese side. Yes, it's uh, clear China didn't want to uh, the. Uh, I said 15th, we want uh, 16th, of course. And uh, if we want uh, 16th, what China can do, can uh, <coughs> is, uh, just mention is that is, uh, um, we can build more bilateral mechanisms or platforms to deal with, uh, especially some of the concerns <coughs> from the union side. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, not only sector, uh, levels, uh, even regional levels, and also uh, some of the key issues levels, uh, very specific, uh, uh, yeah, bilateral mechanism to deal with these issues. It's a, and uh, this is experience. It's, a, uh, it's, a, it's, it's we learn a lot from ASEAN processes. So ASEAN also very different country, but uh, integrated in long terms and change a lot. No, I think yes. Uh, so, uh, I think here is a good opportunity for us to change a lot of things. I just want to bring it to your notice that uh, those of us who are not specialists of India-China trade relations, we've been hearing now for the past several years, you know, about these special mechanisms which are being used to deal with the deficit question. And yet, uh, fundamentally, there is no substantive resolution of the problem. So I think uh, all that we are trying to convey to you is that the deficit issue, the NTB issue that was mentioned in the beginning, and the general trade scenario. You know, Indian public opinion is quite uh, uh, irritated with this, and it's quite unhappy with this. Mm -hmm. I think this is a thought we want to leave with you. Obviously, these are not the questions which can be resolved yeah. in course of a one and a half hour long seminar. Uh, it requires much bigger engagement and I must say by both sides, not just Beijing, but definitely uh, both India and China. It's a complicated And I think uh, as uh, Professor Song Hong has very rightly mentioned, we need to create bilateral platforms where uh, these can be discussed and I uh, fully agree with you, uh, Professor Song Hong, for uh, 
making some initiatives, let the governments do their job. I think uh, academics can start and, and, and uh, there should be more work between yours and my institutions and, and we can uh, explore such possibilities as today you have gathered uh, some ideas that, that everybody has and as Ambassador Bhatia very rightly articulated that there is a concern now which is uh, holding government back in terms of what decision they make. So, so and I'm very glad that you mentioned that China would like uh, RCEP 16 and not RCEP 15 which uh, Ambassador Bhatia and uh, uh, Dr. Harsha asked you. So I think uh, uh, this positivism and, uh, and pragmatism in terms of handling uh, the bilateral issues is, is very important. Uh, I do not know if you want to add more to the yes. uh, discourse because there are two more questions that you have to answer. Yes. Yes. And uh, also, uh, so for, for changes, uh, uh, our yeah, cooperation is under and also, uh, one suggestion is that, uh, yes, uh, from Chinese side, we can change a lot of things. Yeah. So, uh, if we cooperate, uh, uh, there are some uh, bilateral uh, platform for that. And also, uh, India, from Indian side, yeah, for the RCEP, uh, for the RCEP, yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, take uh, for granted, yes, uh, if India wants to join RCEP, you didn't make some changes for that. You must make big changes for that because uh, this is uh, not uh, yes. It's uh, a lot of the internal reforms you need uh, uh, because uh, you must to yeah to give up more your competitive uh, advantages. Otherwise, yeah, it's even your journal if you didn't uh, to change something internally. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the, this uh, asset is, uh, is more yeah, opportunity for me. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's also last, uh, last question. Last question about the agriculture. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, goes. Yes. In 2008, I was in Kunming and we were taken to Yitsumbana Tropical Botanical Garden. And I am a total vegetarian. And the host. Uh, had a lot of dishes and we told in this dish there is 40% vegetarian, in this dish there is 70% vegetarian. So this is a perception. So I am not, now I am taking you out from the trust deficit. So it is a behavioral relationship that will add value to our mutual relationship in advancing in trade. And that is why our suggestion to give more visa clearances and other things to our businessman, particularly in identified area, this yeah. will add more value. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. Yeah. thank you, uh, Professor Song Hong. I think uh, this was a very interesting round. A lot of issues have come up. Uh, probably uh, our joint work would answer questions like what uh, uh, Professor Batra raised in terms of how you see India addressing domestic reforms and, and uh, uh, our media and others have been suggesting. So I think uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, joint research can, can, can bring out some of the issues. They can't, as Mr. Bhatia rightly said, can't be answered in uh, an hour long program. But you have stimulated our minds and, and I'm very grateful to you for uh, uh, taking up the challenge and, and being with us. Uh, as you rightly described, it was a very informal seminar. I would now request uh, uh, Professor Mohanty to uh, give us the sort of uh, a summary of our uh, mm -hmm. discussion and, uh, and the way forward. Uh, the lunch is already uh, in the boxes, so please feel free to uh, begin and, and we would uh, hear Professor Mohanty. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Shonghong. Uh, very uh, nice and brilliant uh, presentation. You have covered not only a number of issues, but you have answered wide varieties of uh, questions uh, in a very comprehensive manner. Uh, thank you very much for that. If uh, uh, the issues are so many that it is very difficult to summarize them, but uh, primarily you have touched upon three broad issues. First of all, that uh, what is the Chinese experience in terms of liberalizing uh, the Chinese economy over the last uh, 34 decades, since 1978. And then, uh, what are those issues in ASEAN? And then the broad issue is that looking at the growing trade deficit with India, then what is your reaction? I think these are the three broad uh, areas you have uh, um, mostly covered in your deliberation. 
you have mentioned that uh, how uh, uh, the Chinese economy in 1978 grew from a commodity export to uh, becoming a manufacturing export at a later stage. That uh, graduation, you uh, mentioned that how production network and uh, global value chain has helped China in terms of uh, uh, increasing its uh, space production trade uh, and other areas. <coughs> so over the years you have built a huge capacity in the manufacturing sector and that's how you have started industrializing in one area and started uh, expanding into other uh, part of the uh, country. Now, uh, uh, particularly when you refer to, to uh, the um, uh, global value chain, the expansion of that, how ASEAN has real help as a supplier and how China mainland is used uh, as the hub for assembly line uh, and the global conditions, particularly uh, the buoyancy, what prevailed uh, during 2003 to 2007, helped China in terms of uh, uh, building its manufacturing sector to a very large extent. Uh, particularly parts and components, that uh, really helped China in terms of expanding its manufacturing sector, particularly uh, the way uh, um, uh, ASEAN countries helped. Interestingly, you find that the supply capacity in, uh, uh, in, the, in the Southeast Asian uh, countries, particularly because of uh, electronic revolution, hard disk revolution, that really complemented the supply capabilities of China that uh, really matched. Uh, and, uh, but that doesn't mean that other countries are not having uh, uh, that kind of competitiveness in partial components. Uh, in our study uh, with the Reserve Bank of India, we have shown that in India, you have in your deliberation repeatedly saying that India should join in, in the area of parts and components. And because of it is not really engaging strongly with that sector, uh, uh, possibly India is not uh, really getting uh, from the benefit that is expected from uh, 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 India in the manufacturing sector or in the parts and components. It is not correct. Quantitatively, it is the same. At a very micro level, six digit analysis that India has competitiveness and different product lines over most of the important old ASEAN countries in a diversified sectors in parts and components. So, India, uh, it would be beneficial for China to change its source of import uh, from South Asian countries to India. Uh, to gain its advantage in the manufacturing sector. So it is not that we don't have the capabilities to do that, but actually it is not happening. And if you say that in under ASEP, it can really uh, uh, get more space, I don't understand how it can happen. It is basically a structural problem, and structural problem can only be addressed through uh, specific policy intervention. And what is that for policy intervention? That we can really expect it through ASEP, that is a question to uh, uh, and, and also you have um, mentioned that uh, because of uh, the, the rapid uh, growth in the manufacturing sector, uh, the employment sector, particularly in the blue and white colored employment, uh, grew uh, 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 exponentially over the years. That is correct. But uh, if you say that the Chinese experience can be replicated in other countries, including India, that is difficult. Because the situation at which, the period at which China grew may not be the same with India, and the economic history of both countries are different. Political reasons are different. So, uh, two countries are placed in a, two different situations. So, it would be very difficult to say that the, the experience of one country can be replicated in other countries that merit so happen. Coming back to the, your second issue on ASEP, I think China, uh, uh, and that is the floor, it has come very sharply that uh, in the big room, I think uh, two elephants, uh, 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 India and China, they have to negotiate separately. The question is that, what is that? So, as you said rightly, China would be interested asset with 16 members, not 15 members. If that is the case, then how that will happen? And what is that specific offer that China can really offer to India 
to ensure that India is very much in the, in the asset process. I will uh, cite the uh, case of uh, uh, security people that under that, China, Japan has got uh, much better uh, uh, concessions as compared to Vietnam. Even when TTP was under negotiation, uh, uh, US was given much more uh, um, 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 differential uh, uh, treatment based on the other smaller partners. I think in that format, uh, China and India should uh, start a negotiation uh, in this particular area. Uh, as you said uh, that uh, uh, electronic and machinery are the two sectors where uh, 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 there is uh, large scope. Now one has to again articulate the policies through which China and India can really engage. Already we have heard from uh, Dr. Goel that how China and India has a really uh, uh, engage themselves very strongly in the electronics sector. I, I think the process which is already started, I think we should take it forward to a very large extent. Uh, uh, to your uh, uh, other uh, question about the trade deficit that you have mentioned that trade deficit uh, is again very strongly addressed through anti -dopping. I think China is not only facing anti-doping from India, it is very much uh, there uh, with Brazil, very strongly with Argentina and many other countries, though China is very strongly engaged with the uh, Latin American countries in the recent years. But uh, I should uh, ensure one part is that anti-doping is not the way to stop imports from a particular country. It can stop only few uh, uh, companies at uh, a couple of years, but it cannot really stop uh, uh, trade deficit uh, or stop, uh, cannot stop a particular sector. I also, uh, in a study you have mentioned that not only that India is putting anti doping against China, China is also putting anti doping against India in certain sectors that you have to uh, recognize. So uh, I, I think these are the broad issues. Uh, uh, I think many of uh, our uh, uh, differences, particularly in the trade deficit, we have raised in the WTO, particularly in the trade policy uh, review uh, rounds, uh, um, from agriculture uh, to, to manufacturing sector, I think wide range of areas where we have complained uh, that how China can reconsider India's request to waive uh, some of these uh, entities uh, in the long run. I think many of them are addressed and many of them are not addressed. I think, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Professor Chaturvedi has mentioned, that it is not a, a question that defending our own positions in the different areas. It is the question that how we can really uh, uh, reduce what uh, Dr. Hart said, that how to minimize trust, uh, trust deficit uh, and, and really can work together for a, a better world. I think India-China can work uh, and contribute a lot to the global economy if they really go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Monty. I think uh, he has brought out some key features uh, that uh, this discussion and our joint work can, can uh, move forward with. This study that he did, I think, is absolutely uh, impressive uh, in, the, uh, in the sense that it could bring out uh, the post-production uh, uh, non-competitive character of some of the Indian uh, uh, commodities that he referred to, particularly in the manufacturing way. Uh, we find uh, cost of production lower than uh, some of the ASEAN countries, but when it comes to be part of that value chain, the cost rises and, and we are not connected. So some of that, as you rightly mentioned, some of the domestic reforms, some of the infrastructural constraints once addressed, probably uh, uh, the, the, the connect would be there. Japan uh, has leveraged uh, 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 this to a great extent by addressing uh, investment in the logistic corridors. So Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor and further, as I mentioned to you, the Asia Africa Growth Corridor are some of the initiatives where Japan is uh, uh, addressing uh, the, the fundamental challenges India is facing in terms of deficit, not just of trust, but also investment deficit. So that uh, uh, component has given now Japanese firms a huge jump. Now we have 748 mega firms from Japan who are engaged in the production landscape of India. So, so what Japan is doing is, is, is uh, 
huge in terms of not only investments for infra infrastructure, production and exports, but also for skills. And, and that is what is uh, giving new windows for our cooperation with Japan. I would very much urge you to look into some of these dimensions and, and see how we can go forward. But as of now, only lunch we have to go forward with. I would request Professor Mohanty as, uh, as uh, our uh, uh, gesture for appreciation for you to join us uh, this afternoon. A small gift from RIS for okay, you. you. So please, uh, please take it. Thank you.